Hey friends, it's Thursday, I believe. It's the hot news time. We're gonna talk about Intel because I know everybody else in the world is talking about AMD right now because the Ryzen 5000 series just launched, but we're gonna go the opposite way with Intel on the rocket-like stuff. We're gonna talk about AMD's benchmarks on their GPUs and the fact that EK might be coming out with a thermoelectric cooler. So let's get into that after we talk about today's video sponsor for this episode of Hot News, which is gonna be Synergy. My friend Synergy, in case you haven't heard of them, I've talked about them so much. I love them as a product and the sponsoring of this channel Synergy is the app that you need if you're going to be trying to access more than one computer at the same time on the same network because it simplifies your life. If you want to just use one keyboard and mouse for multiple PCs, you can do that with Synergy, whether it's Mac, Linux, Windows, it's all connected via Synergy. You can use the link at the video description to go check it out. You can get either Synergy Basic or Synergy Pro, which includes SSL encryption, but the link in the video description, pick up Synergy, simplify your life, make sure that you're not needing to use KVM switches or needing to have multiple keyboards and mouse on a desktop. Like I'm trying to do stuff here. I'm trying to do stuff on this computer. And then I'm also trying to do stuff on that computer. Synergy makes it so I don't have to trudge all the way over here. Just trudge a word. I need to Google that, trudge. No, I just messed up saying trudge. That makes sense. Okay, well, let's go ahead and talk about Intel's mess up because that's essentially what allowed AMD game dominance, not the fact that AMD all of a sudden was got so brilliant, it's amazing. I mean, they did do that. There is like no no slight to the engineers there, but the reason that they're king of the pile is because Intel fell behind, not because AMD was able to just absolutely keep in check with the way Intel was updating because Intel hasn't updated since 2015. I'm trying to say that Intel screwed themselves over but it's coming out as if AMD sucks and I, I that's not the way I'm going here anyways let's talk about Rocket Lake because in case you didn't hear prior to some stuff that went on with AMD Intel came out and said that we're going to be coming out with Rocket Lake and it's going to be fast we promise double digit IPCs to which the entire internet went Cool, thanks for the Medium blog post. Again, we'll believe you when we see stuff. Well, turns out that even though Intel gave us the update, we do have benchmarks which are indicating that it might be an AMD crusher. So the anticipated release date for Rocket Lake at this point is Q1 of 2021. Probably late March is when we're expecting these things to come out. And it's still on 14 nanometers, but it's a brand new architecture. So it's not going to be the same Skylake rehash that we've been seeing, which allows them to get these performance gains. So what we're seeing in this benchmark is a Rocket Lake chip running at 4.2 gigahertz coming in with a single core score of 179, whereas a 10900K at 5.3 gigahertz does 152 points. So one gigahertz difference and Rocket Lake is absolutely slaughtering it, which in case you're not familiar, even though we are expecting that AMD takes the performance crown today with the launch of the Ryzen 5000 series, it's not gonna be by such a large amount that a gain like this, a 15 to 22% gain by Intel couldn't put them ahead once again. This is incredibly intriguing. Obviously, it's still very early levels, but a 4.2 gigahertz Intel Rocket Lake CPU beating out a 5.3 gigahertz 10900K, that is some good competition that we could see coming to AMD sometime in the next six to nine months if AIM Intel can get their act together. So Rocket Lake, I think let's pause and have bated breath for competition to actually be there because it really hasn't been happening. I'm excited for this because that means that AMD and Intel can go head to head as opposed to AMD just being like, bye Intel, we loved you. You served as a foil to our greatness, but screw you, it's done. And not only did we get benchmarks, but now we actually apparently have pictures of not only Rocket Lake, but Alder Lake. So the 11900K is likely pictured in this image. And I just have to say, yeah, that's an Intel CPU. Sure is. Alder Lake's a bit more intriguing. So what they're saying might be the 12900K. You can see here, it's a little lengthier. It's a longer boy. It's got that, it's, what's the, is there an elevated meme where like a thing is, super long i don't know it's as lanky as i was in high school i'll tell you that but i'm sure a lot of you guys are excited for amd so let's go ahead and switch on over to them right now because we got more benchmarks of the 6900 and 6800 xt with the 5900X and what we can see here is that the RX 6000 series is just stepping all over Nvidia 
in a lot of games. Doom Eternal, the 3090 still holds the top spot, but it does look like AMD does have a true contender here, especially with the fact that the 6900 XT is only going to cost $999 and the 39 is $1,500. It's a hard argument to make for gaming scenarios that you would even pick up anything beyond the 6900 XT. However, with these benchmarks, do take note that it does say that AMD's smart access memory is enabled because it is using Ryzen 5000, so you won't see these benchmarks on all platforms, but it's still a good indication that the 6000 series is here to play. And I'm sure there's going to be a ton more information of reviews of the Ryzen 5000 series. I didn't get a chip, so I can't cover this. But as we're covering the news just the day before, it appears that there's a benchmark of the Ryzen 9 5950X coming in at 5.9 gigahertz or 5900 megahertz. 59, 59, so close to greatness, just 10 points off, you know, but that's still a fast fast CPU. And what's a fast GPU is apparently going to be AMD cDNA architecture. In case you don't remember, AMD actually split off their gaming and compute architectures into RDNA and cDNA. And the first cDNA GPU should be coming out in the middle of November with the Instinct NI100. We don't know much about it right now, but we're anticipating that we're going to get some details later on. And that's what we're hoping with regards to this EK Waterblocks cooler with a thermoelectric CPU cooler using Pelshire cooler appears to to have been shown off on the Linus Tech Tips video that came out on November 3rd, the fastest gaming PC in the world. He was able to show off the block, but then had to blur out other things that came with the box. The speculation right now is it's a thermoelectric cooler that EK might be launching sometime later this year because they were able to run a 10900K at 5.4 gigahertz at a roughly 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, which is insane because those things chow power my friends what doesn't chow power is mini led because they're mini that's the idea i actually don't know if power consumption goes down with mini led that's not the point ipad pro is apparently coming out with their mini led displays in q1 of next year they're going to be manufactured by samsung and they're going to be great it says it improves battery efficiency so that you know i'm, I'm going to say it's minier because it's mini led that makes sense what's minier is how you use spotify on your Apple Watch now, because before you had to pair your phone, now you can do it just on the watch, which I don't know why this took so long. Apparently bull crap between Spotify and Apple, but now you can stream stuff directly to your Apple Watch. Thanks, Spotify, only took a decade, and it's not gonna take a decade for Elon Musk and Tesla to come out with their Cybertruck, and it shouldn't take too long for us to get some updates on what's going down. Elon Musk saying in an interview that potentially we might get an update on the Cybertruck in the next four weeks or so with regards to certain changes that they've made to it, but that are likely going to be minuscule. Elon Musk previously stating that the Cybertruck, even though they wanted to get it smaller, probably won't be any smaller without compromising the core of what the car is. Truck is Baki, what the Baki is. Speaking of updates, apparently Crisis is deciding that it's going to update to the cool hip kids world that is Battle Royales with Crisis next being the next game that they're working on that's gonna be a Battle Royale FPS. We don't need any more Battle Royales, and boy, howdy, do we need a better name than next. Oh, Crytek, please. Uh, Corsair, however, is having an update that I actually truly appreciate, the HS70 headphones, which Catlin has been using as her daily drivers for our editing. We had like six of these in our office in South Africa. They're launching a Bluetooth update, which is gonna be phenomenal. It's also gonna have a three and a half millimeter jack. We're gonna be able to do wired gaming audio on any console and wireless, Bluetooth, all of that. We love the HS70s. They, they're super comfortable. They've done really well for us. So I'm excited to see what Corsair has with this. And I'm excited to see more stuff about the DualSense controller because there's a teardown that has indicated that it does have a bigger battery. It does have bigger everything. And it does have the adaptive trigger and just the teardown review doing all of that. I actually yesterday got mine delivered, my DualSense controller, because Best Buy is selling these already, just in case you didn't know, we'll leave a link in the video description. I don't have a PS5 pre-order, and I don't know why I need a second controller, but I, I've got a PS5 controller, guys. Please tell me I'm special. Speaking of the PS5, we got some indication of sales. Sony expecting to sell 7.6 million launch sales, which hopefully means that they actually are going to have ample stock and then I'll actually be able to get one of them. That 7.6 million unit is going to outpace the original year of the PS4. I just, I hope I can buy it and I hope I can stay in communication with the probe that is furthest from my heart. Voyager 2 finally been in contact with NASA for the first time since March. They had to upgrade a, a dish, a satellite dish in Australia that 
hasn't been replaced in 47 years, which is before the Voyager 2 even launched. And once they did that, now they can communicate with Voyager 2. And uh, hopefully they're letting it know that it made the right decision to leave Earth because 2020 is just a crap show. And so good job, Voyager 2. You predicted the future by getting the heck out of here, just like I'm going to do with this episode of Hot News. I'm done. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Synergy. The app that allows you to control multiple devices using a singular keyboard and mouse. It's phenomenal. It's simplified my life and simplicity in 2020. I can tell you I've absolutely needed it anyways. Simplify your life by leaving me the heck alone because I'm done with this episode of Hot News. I love you too. Bye. I'm with it. I'm hip.